We're joined on INSEAD Knowledge by John Johnston, President of uh, Raffles Hotels and Resorts. You've been in the job since August. Has it been a major challenge for you? Well, it's been, it's, a, it's an extremely interesting assignment. Um, I, uh, I, I moved here, as you say, five months ago um, to take the role as president of Raffles Hotels. Um, I had previously been with the parent company, uh, Fairmont Raffles Hotels International, and uh, the role uh, that I have now is um, essentially to expand the Raffles Group. Uh, we're a small uh, luxury hotel management company, currently with six hotels. Uh, we're going to expand quite aggressively, adding three this year and maybe another six or seven hotels over the following two to three years. So in that regard, um, there is significant change and significant growth for the company. You're talking specifically about the, the raffles portion because uh, it's a group, as a group, it encompasses something like 90 plus hotels and resorts. Well, the parent company, yes, we do. We have uh, almost 100 hotels uh, across the, uh, the world. Uh, in three uh, different and quite distinct brands. So those three brands are Raffles, which we just mentioned, uh, Fairmont, uh, where, where we have 60 hotels, and Swiss Hotel. And we, each of those uh, brands, each of those companies, really uh, from a brand point of view, uh, a style point of view, is operated as an independent entity. Um, but we have the luxury of working uh, with a large uh, infrastructure and a large parent. So for uh, legal services, for design and construction, for purchasing, for IT, um, each of the three distinct brands is able to share a common platform in a way that they probably gives them greater strength and efficiency than were they uh, to be operated independently. So they're separate brands, each with their own identity, but part of a common family. How do you manage to differentiate between the three? Because it must, there must be times when it just blurs at the edges. One might think that, although in our case, uh, I think there are uh, quite significant differences between each of the brands. In some ways it's been a, a complicated uh, past 10 years so it because it, Raffles Group came under capital land in Singapore, it was under Tomasek, it was then divested um, because it was seen as being non-core. Um, then it also acquired uh, Swiss hotels. Right. Um, so it's been quite a, a complex period. Well, it's interesting because the, uh, as you say, it has been extremely complex and uh, something that we probably uh, uh, don't need or want to share from a guest point of view. But from a business point of view, um, it is quite interesting and it, is, it has been quite complex. Um, you've really got if you will, three quite distinct uh, threads that have today been brought together under a common ownership. And then just to spice it up is when Raffles is then sold on to uh, a US private equity group for a billion US dollars. Exactly. Uh, colony capital. And then you get the involvement of uh, the Saudis as well. E exactly. Well, uh, now to put those threads together, um, Exactly as you say, the Raffles Swiss company acquired by an American private equity group, Colony. Um, the public company, Fairmont, uh, was uh, corporately raided by Carl Icahn about uh, f f three or four years ago. And the white knight, if you will, that came in to take, the com to take Fairmont private was a partnership that comprised Prince Al Waleed through his Kingdom Hotels vehicle or Kingdom Holdings vehicle and the colony entity that owned Raffles and Swiss Hotel. So today we are an amalgam uh, of the Raffles Swiss company, the Canadian Pacific Fairmont company. Uh, the parent company is called Fairmont Raffles Holdings International, headquartered in Toronto privately held essentially by 
65, 70% by kingdom and the balance by, uh, by colony. And uh, uh, so it's a, a very, very interesting and very complex uh, transaction, as you've said, Stuart. It's interesting that a private equity firm would get involved with this because it's not seen as being a growth business, which is exactly the reason why Tomasek decided to offload it in the first place. Well, I think um, you know there are certain uh, of the private equity funds who look at the hotel industry slightly differently. Um, Colony Capital, uh, for sure, has. Uh, uh, some quite interesting uh, hospitality. It's got casinos, interest. basically. Casinos, Las and, Vegas, and, and, so. and other hotels. Uh, Blackstone, of course, with uh, uh, the Savoy Group at one time, with the Hilton Group today. Um, so I think within their real estate holdings, they see uh, hotels as an important uh, uh, component. And certainly from the Fairmont Raffles Hotels group perspective, uh, one of the things that we've done, uh, I think in a very aggressive and successful way over the last three, uh, three and a half years since Colony and Kingdom have owned us, is to add uh, properties in the pipeline uh, for essentially for all three brands. And I think by and large that growth was driven by the desire both of Kingdom and Colony, uh, obviously, to expand the company. So the situation now is that uh, you're in charge of a, a relatively small group, um, the Raffles portion of that, but you are looking for growth opportunities. Um, and it was reported recently that Europe is one possible destination. Why Europe at this time? What we need to do with with all three brands is to uh, is is to grow them in order to uh, increase our fee income, which is our essentially our revenue base. Um, what we will do is look for the opportunities that exist for each of the specific brands. Um, clearly, with um, our small base and our Asian base plus the properties that we have in the pipeline. If you think of the cities where we currently operate, so we're in Singapore, we're in Beijing, we're in Dubai, we're about to open in Paris, it seems that the target cities for the Raffles brand, where uh, we can make a difference and we can put a hotel that would be distinctive uh, and, and high, value creation for an owner and fee creation for us, the cities uh, that fit would be uh, London uh, would be a primary city, New York would be a primary city, uh, Shanghai would be a primary city, Tokyo and Hong Kong. So the five target cities uh, for expansion for raffles would be those five cities. And in addition, we, we, we look at resort opportunities um, uh, to complement those city center destinations. And so you are opening a hotel in Paris, as you say, the, the Royal Monceau. Many people would think that Asia, though, would be the, uh, the real growth area at the moment. Well, I, as I say, in, to some extent in the hotel growth and development business, one has to be somewhat reactive and somewhat opportunist. Um, we, there are certainly uh, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Tokyo would be primary targets. Uh, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Taipei would be, uh, Jakarta would be, if you will, s slightly less on the priority, but still on the priority list. So yes, I think w I wouldn't want to give the impression that we have a specific geographic area of growth. I mean, I think we can build on the Asian platform and we need to move into areas where the Raffles brand uh, can flourish uh, with a point of differentiation from 
the, uh, the other brands. But Europe is being seen as a primary goal at the moment. Well, um, Europe, in fact, this year we're going to open three hotels, uh, one in Tianjin, uh, China, uh, one in France, uh, in Paris, the Royal Monceau, and one in Mecca, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So quite diverse, uh, quite important uh, hotels that will um, uh, certainly create a great deal of awareness. Now, those hotels have been in the pipeline for two to three years. Um, and while we're operating the existing portfolio, while we're opening those in the existing pipeline, with trying to add to the pipeline with, uh, with, with properties in those major cities that we mentioned, be it Europe or uh, North America or Asia. So I mean, the, 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 goal, is to, uh, the goal is to grow the brand uh, slowly, steadily in markets uh, that are complementary to each other. And just briefly, in terms of um, what we've seen in terms of the, the recession, the down, economic downturn, to what extent have you been impacted? Well, like, uh, like all businesses and like the, the hotel industry uh, in particular, we've been impacted uh, fairly, uh, in a fairly major way in the last uh, 15, 15 months. So, um, Business has been off across the board in the sort of 15 to 20 percent range. Um, there has been a shifting momentum in travel patterns. Um, some of the corporate uh, clients that would normally meet two and three times a year are, have, have either cancelled last year or have cut back in their travel. Uh, some leisure travel has shifted from uh, segment uh, either from segment to s segment downwards or, uh, or, or or the business has fallen off so it's been a difficult year um, it's been a very difficult year and that's going to continue this year there are pockets of uh, there are certainly pockets of uh, of optimism um, in in Asia uh, in in Cambodia, in Singapore, in China, uh, the three locations where there are raffles. Uh, w over the last two to three months, we've seen a pickup in business, and more importantly, we've seen a pickup in, uh, in booking pace. Um, so that is somewhat encouraging. Um, we're going into new markets. I mean, we opened in Dubai uh, two years ago, so we hadn't really fully grown into our market share when the recession hit. Um, so for us, we've got room for growth. Um, so we're seeing some uh, re-emergence of activity uh, in, in the Middle East. The opening of our Mecca Hotel uh, will increase our awareness. And then going into Paris, um, so far we, we see, you know, Good interest in, in in the in the new hotel there. So, I think cautiously optimistic, um, but we're we're we I, I I don't think we're out of the woods. John Johnson of Raffles Hotels and Resorts. Thanks for joining us. On thank, the you. Knowledge. thank you. Thank you.